Someone mentioned to me or asked me earlier about impeachment. And that's interesting, too. There's a remedy. It should be broadly used, but it isn't. And it's interpreted by attorneys to mean something far distant from it was it is original intent. Justice Story writes extensively on what impeachment is. And in fact, impeachment by him and Story, you may recall, was a uh, chief justice of the United States Supreme Court. He was on that court for 25 years and he uh, served up until 1845. So he was around when the Constitution was written. Don't you think he knew what it really meant? More than today's judges might think they know. Well, Story, in his commentaries, says that whatever the House of Representatives determined to be impeachable is. One might conclude that spitting on the sidewalk might be impeachable. If the House of Representatives so said, it would be. And of course, the Senate was to sit in trial of that, the individual who had been impeached. And if found guilty, they could no longer hold office and they were expelled from the office in which they held, held at the time. And of course, if it had been a crime, they could be prosecuted. What we witnessed with President Clinton was a joke. It was a farce. It would be great if we could, in fact, go back to the original structure of government. And I would encourage you to study more about that. Given the limit of time, I'll actually will be talking a little bit later more about that. But I want you to focus on this Constitution. If you haven't gotten one from your senator, oh, they do have one that the House puts out. It's different than this one. Uh, they changed it. Used to be like it. It only had the Constitution in it. Oh, my. Somebody's doing things. Anyway. Um, they changed it and made it small print, added all sorts of other things, and even put a uh, Supreme Court, a Pennsylvania Supreme Court decision in there that said it, the last sentence in Article 1, Section 7 was unconstitutional. If you read that case, it doesn't have anything to do with that, but that's what they claim. And that's in the Constitution, beyond my belief. So I'd encourage you to get the state constitution from your senators and get a lot of them. What we're trying to do, and I'll try to head this up, is to insist that those in government follow the Constitution. In order to do that and to celebrate this day, a number of years ago I wrote a act which I titled Act 1776. It's one page. You can get a copy of it over at the uh, tent, the, the large green tent, and I encourage you to do that. In essence, it has three parts. The first part is to celebrate the glorious day of the Pennsylvania Constitution, September 28th. The second part is to insist that the Constitution be placed back, the study of the Constitution be placed back in all the schools. That is, from the primary, secondary, college, and university. Unfortunately, even attorneys don't study the Constitution, and you'd think they should, but they don't. They study cases. The last part, which causes the most consternation for those in government, but I'm sure you might find very appealing, is that everyone in government must pass a comprehensive exam on the, exam on the Constitution before they can do anything in their office. After all, the Constitution is the job description. What amazes me is those in government object to that even though they take an oath of office to support, obey, and defend it. I really can't get my head around it. There's a petition over at the green tent and also at the uh, sign-in uh, tent for this uh, to get the legislators to, in fact, enact this act into law and to hold those in government uh, accountable. It has four parts in this petition. One is to study and understand the Constitution. The sec second one is to obey their oath of office. The third one is to pass the act or something very similar to it. And last, to introduce 
legislation and make into law that all in government will strictly interpret the Constitution by original intent uh, as it was written. It is not a living document, it is a legal document, and it should be interpreted accordingly. Also, to use true history to uh, write their opinions. I hope that all of you will and get involved, sign the petition. If you're interested in circulating the petition to others, please stop by and talk with me, and I'll make sure that you get the necessary documents to do so. I would encourage all of you to, to trust the law as the remedy, because without law, we are, in fact, a lawless society. Unfortunately, what we have today is a whole lot of people in government who are operating outside the law, and we all know what we call those folks, don't we? Outlaws. God bless you, and have a, an enjoyable time. Thank you very much. Thank you, William Taylor Ryle.